ladies and gentlemen, Lil Jesse. It's lit, the boy. It's lit. Hey, it's lit. It's lit. They should have been like one of you know, like uh, the claps. Just we can we can edit like that. Like a in slow there. golf clap. But what's up? Any new face tattoos? Yes. Really? Really? Eleven. I I can see it. Oh, Move the, the hair. Can you see it? The, no, so much the hair. number eleven. Oh, okay, that's clean looking. I've never noticed the uh, the sun and the snowflake one. Really? What's it means? It means just like hot and cold, just like being like one day you could be. It's like basically one day bipolar. you're hot, then you're cold. You're K- yes, then you're no. K- is you're K- in, is K- then K- you're K- out. Yeah. You're yeah. up then when then it's you're down. down. You're wrong, wrong when it's right. right. You're black when, when it's white. white. We fight, we break up. We kiss, we make yeah, up. Bro. You, you never no. say no. You, you never go. Harry, man. Dude, that's tight. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Certified <laughs> banger. <laughs> dude, she's full of them, man. I know she, she ain't is. as big as she used to be, but Katy Perry, dude. She had some hits, man. Hey, yeah, one, man. One of my favorite songs by her that I literally have downloaded on my phone still to this day. Every time I get a new phone, new... New Spotify, you know, like account or Apple Music account. Mm-hmm. I download the song that one that got away. The one that got away. Yeah, that's uh, a good. That one. is a, a great song. song. What's the one song? Firework. Firework. Yeah. Firework. Oh, oh yeah, I was gonna tell you the number. The the. Oh yeah, what's the eleven? It's my favorite number, and it's a high. It's an uh, angelic number. Angelic number, however you want to say it. Angelic. Angelic. I always say it so wrong. It's a great word. Yeah, angelic. Yeah, it's a angelic number, but I do be you know. Normal, just say angel number, and to me the number eleven implies high energy. Somebody with high energy and just like a optimism. Optimistic. Did you Google that? Yeah, but then I read a lot of stuff about it, and a lot of people who's like deep, deep in it. And I see the number one, one, one every day of my life, and four, four, four. So I see four, four, every four day, lot. like every day. I saw it four times. This morning. Are those like angel numbers or something yes. like that? What yeah. they call- okay. Is that what they're called? Yeah. Yes. Angel numbers. 444, four, 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 look it up. Type in 444, four, four, <laughs> uh, angel number meaning. 444 four, four means all is well. I feel like that's how like people in the afterlife speak to us. Yeah. It's through like numbers. That's like the first like one on Google. Google. What, 444? Four, four, four? Yeah. Yep. I told you, bro. I see well, it all the time. They're probably listening to us. Good. Dude. I want them to know that we're here with high energy. Me and my mm-hmm. wife were talking about something, and then I went to Google about it, and yeah. it was like the first thing that popped that up. Made that and like, Michael. it wasn't something that should have been the first thing. I forget what it was. So they're probably listening. Oh, they are. yeah. They, yeah I'm glad, they are. and that's wonderful. I want them to. I hope it's my grandmother that's not with me right now. It, I believe no, that. It's probably just Mark Zuckerberg, man, or somebody like Mark that. Zuckerberg. Yeah, that, that's that's who's listening. It's it's, yeah, it's one it's of those true, dudes. But I but I'm saying like I'll be seeing like four 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 on a, like a license plate driving by me like t- twice in a row. So that I mean, come on. Yeah, it's, yeah. Four 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 is considered a number of protection and encouragement. Does it say all as well? And a sign that you are currently following the right, right path. path. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. That falls right in line and falls yeah. well. I like that. And it also falls in love with the, your grandmother, too, that you were speaking about, protection yeah. and encouragement. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's one that thing that was always done. Oh, yeah. That was my, my Mimi. She passed in uh, February 17, 2018. Mm. So coming up on uh, three years. Wow. Man. Wow, man. Yeah. Beautiful person. Love her to death. But also, I forgot to say the number 11, ironically enough, ironically enough is my 11th face tattoo, too. Really? Hey, and I'm going to keep cool. it probably the last one. Really? Because it made, the number eleven made my eleventh face tattoo. But now you gotta get a number twelve. I'm out, bro. <laughs> you gotta get the thirteen, bro. <laughs> Where's your face tattoo? I remember the first interview we did. I'm you good, like, bro. I got a couple tattoos. I don't see none. Still, bring a tattoo. I, I, I can see them like when you do that. W- w- whenever I uh, actually start getting, some, whenever I get some money in I life, it, I feel it. Then, dude, I'm gonna have straight <laughs> sleeves. I've always wanted the sleeves and the chest. That's what I'm gonna go for. But man, it's just so expensive, my especially with what I want to. Yeah, I, like yeah. I, I draw out all my tattoos. What do you want? Some detailed stuff. Very detailed, so, and that's what is holding up right now. I, I don't want to just go for anything. I, I want to go for what I legit want. That's my favorite. Mine that's one of my favorite tattoos skirt. you have, bro. Skirt. Skirt. <laughs> That was the first interview, bro. He said, "I got a tattoo that says skirt." No, he said, "What's the, what's your?" He it. said, "He said, what's your least favorite?" I said, "Probably." I didn't want to show it, but I was like, "Probably this one." <laughs> I still ain't covered it up because ever since no, I said that, don't. I love it. Ever since I said that, people was like, "That's funny." It is funny. Yeah, it's hilarious. But I think of if whenever I'm like 87 
for like 105. Then you're going to be able to tell your <laughs> great like, grandchildren that <laughs> back in my day, all the cool kids said skirt. Yeah, what are they? Yeah, but what, what would okay, they okay, be? Okay, Grandpa, get back inside. <laughs> <laughs> what would they be saying? You ain't got your pants I'm on. scared to I know what the new see, phrases bro. are going to be, I don't, bro. When I'm 85... I don't want to see what's happening. Oh, we dude. probably won't. World's probably going to end by then. No Who knows? way, dude. You think? No way. It'll, it, this, I don't know. It'll eventually uh, get too close to the sun, and we'll like... Well, that's going to be like... Yeah. That's 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 going to be a while, a while away, though. Oh, yeah, but I feel like this Earth will be here for billions more. Did I just mess up the shot by moving that? No. Cool. All well, right. Maybe a little cool. bit. Cool. But... No, I, you're I, good. I, I read a thing, though. It's, it's going to be a while before we... Uh, the sun goes in. Well, the earth gets too close to the eventually, sun. But, but eventually. Eventually. Yeah, well, eventually. Millions of years when we're long dead, that um, everything will. This Do, do you not think that everything is going to go away? Of course it is. Everything. Yeah. I mean, people. I got a big tattoo all the way up my back that I still ain't finished because, you know, I, I limp out sometimes. I got one all the way up my back. It says temporary in cursive words because my body is temporary. My soul ain't, my my energy ain't, my right. spirit ain't, but like this physical form. We we are a spiritual being having a human experience is what I believe. That's a good way to put it, bro. Mm. I, believe I like that. that a lot. Yeah, man. Yeah. Okay, here it is. The the most probable fate of the planet is absor- absorption by the sun in about 7.5 billion years. Oh, okay, we, yeah, oh, we, we got we, time. I think we got we time. We got time. We got time. <laughs> But everything is temporary, man. So many people don't think. Uh, I just had a great podcast with uh, Krista Gent. She's the director of the East Kentucky Science Center and Planetarium. And we talked a lot about the apocalypse and, oh, yeah. like, and, and theories and stuff like that. And if anybody wants to go check that out, they can. But, you know, there are so many probabilities of, you know, whatever you want to call it, Armageddon or Doomsday or mm-hmm. whatever. Yellowstone is Yellow the big one. a ticking time bomb. Yeah, man. Can I, I, this is so left field, but... It had me thinking of what I did just the other day. You're going to think I'm insane. But the yeah. other day, I had I had my buddy, Corey Bailey, me and him, <laughs> straight said his full name. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say it? Corey Lee Bailey. No, keep okay, it in there. Cool, I want cool. him to know. Corey Lee Bailey, I gave him my cell phone up where I'm from, up in Hippo, and he started, you're going to think I'm crazy, bro. But I said, here, video me, dude. And I stood there and I said, I didn't even tell him what I was going to do. Yeah. I said, just video me. He started videoing me. My dogs and stuff was around. And then it's at my childhood home. I said, what's up? It's uh, Lil Jesse, Aaron Hoover, whichever you want to say. I was like, anyways, it's 2021. And I said the date and all that, and the, the time and everything. And I said, um, I'm 24 years old. I said, anyways, let's get on with it. I just want you to know that it is the year 3000. And I'm dropping this, so I set this to premiere for the year 3000. So whatever, whoever sees this then, watch it. But I'll be <laughs> very dead. <laughs> I did that. Like, I did that. <clears throat> it's like a t- gonna, that's a modern day time capsule, bro. bro that's I what I was going to say, but like, we put on a USB drive. But even then, I don't no, know. No, I got to premiere into YouTube. So if YouTube is still a thing, <laughs> it's going to pop, it's going to, it's going to premiere. For real. Uh, for, real. Right now? for real. <laughs> for real. I believe No, you can't say it. You. you can't see it. Right. Only I can see it. Yes, but I, I could even play you the video out loud of me doing it. I could, I could look, you want me to do it? I, I would love, though, to like <laughs> I'm sweating, do, bro. do one of those time capsule things. Yeah. You know, that that would be so uh, cool. Or at least like be part of digging one up. Yeah. That would be the cooler That'd be experience. Neat. Absolutely. Dude. I, I, buried, I buried some stuff in my nana's yard one time when I was a kid, but I don't know where <laughs> it ever ended up being. I don't even remember where I'd, 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 I'd what you need to do is like get like some of those Halloween decorations, like the skeletons, and like preserve them very well somehow. Yeah, yeah. And, and bury it. You know how we got the cemetery behind Nana's house? Yeah. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, listen. I, I'm gonna stop it right before I cuss because I do cuss it like, but I know where. So we can beep it out. Okay. It's a cover. Look. All right. So it's October 23rd, Look 2021. Me. Show it to the camera. It's me, David Aaron Hoover, and I'm here with Corey Bailey. Corey Lee Bailey is videoing. <laughs> And uh, we're in Hippo. Get a good view of Hippo. There's my 2018 Hyundai Elantra that I've wrecked. There's Lucy and the dog. Right here is one of them. And uh, David Aaron Hoover, a.k.a. Lil' Jesse. Anyways, I was going to talk about how I'm going to set this video to release of the year 3000. <laughs> <Don't you>? It's going <laughs> to... 
It's going to premiere on the January 1st, year 3000. I will be dead when y'all see this. I don't know how I've died, but just know that. <laughs> but this video Jesus, will be. man. And by then, probably the videos will be high tech. But right now, we got an iPhone 12 Pro Max, and that's what I'm using. So this will drop. Still listen to my music. And yes, hippo. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, bro. I, I don't lie. I'm serious. That bro. is hilarious to me. Uh, that, that's funny. I hope, you, that's I hope you could play that, but like somehow like we can believe it. it. That is. If you send it. me the video, we can like put it on the screen. Uh, yeah, we will. I will. I That'd think. be dope. Oh, okay. Weird. Yeah, just do that. What do you think? What do y'all think the year three thousand is going to look like? Like like Andre. Andre. Man, it's gonna, it's, on gonna, it's, gonna, it's either gonna look so advanced, like like what people in the '80s thought, like the 2000s are gonna look like, right? Or mm. it's gonna be just a post-apocalyptic wasteland. We're supposed to technically mm. be uh, fl- cars are supposed to be flying by yeah, now. bro. The cars are already flying. Yeah, they got some with propellers. I mean that's like that's the first step though. Right. I know that's like not technically I mean, like, flying. I mean like Back to but, the Future, like skateboard. Remember that? Oh yeah, well, oh, yeah the they, they, they got man. the they got the hoverboards. That's yeah, the but thing it ain't now. the same. The it's on it's the like ground, off the ground you know? though. Yeah, it, it levitates off the ground. Yeah, Tony, did, Tony, I, Tony Hawk I, tried one out. I did see something like that. Yeah, Tony Hawk tried it out. He was I, the first person to ever try out an actual hoverboard. Have and of course, that's the perfect person. Oh yeah, absolutely. Who else? Sean White, maybe. Probably. But I mean, like, that's the first step, man. Mm-hmm. So, and, and that's happening now. Yeah. So uh, imagine, I would say that hover cars are going to be a thing in the next 50 years. I'd say the next hover 20, cars. Bro, 25. Oh, yeah. 50 just for sure. Yeah. But probably 20, yeah. Could no be, doubt it could about be 25, that. you never know. Could be next year. Who knows what they got <laughs> so, right now, dude? I believe they got cures to cancer. Not telling nobody because so much money's in it, chemotherapy, yeah. all that. Oh yeah. And my brother had it, and he beat it, thank God. But That's um, good. you know, he had testicular cancer. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he had literally had to get one of his testicles removed, mm. straight up. And uh, but he beat it at nineteen. He had, he went through chemo and everything, lost his hair. Nineteen. Nineteen, wow. bro. Wow, that's young, he's bro. strong. He is. But strong. he beat it, and he's he's got a his hair, bro. Y'all to see his hair now. It's just like. Super long, like yeah. way longer than my thick. That's cool though. Yeah, he's like, and he is obsessed with the Beatles. Hmm. Like knows everything you could ever. I'm telling you, I would put him against anybody to know about the Beatles. The Beatles were great, man. And uh, oh, but no, we ain't got any Beatles up there. I wish. No, no, I'm trying to look. Bruce Springsteen yes. and Corey Bailey. When the I was talking boss. about, they're they're best, 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 best friends. They 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 went on this Bruce Springsteen. Rampage for like three months straight, drunk, just Bruce Springsteen, Bruce, 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 and it was every day. My papa, we used to go down, we'd go down my papa sometimes, and he's a cool old man, and mm-hmm. we, they'd have Corey would come in with a big speaker and blast <laughs> Bruce, and my papa was like, <laughs> one day he said, as he said, I used to like his music, now I hate it. <laughs> he heard it so much, he's like, I used to really think he was good. He said, but now I hate him. Oh, he's burning him out on it, <laughs> dude. Rosalita though, yeah, oh dude. my. God, my papa's that's favorite. Such a good song. My papa's favorite band of all time is the Rolling Stones. See, I've always been a, more of a Rolling Stones fan than the Beatles. I, I still like the Beatles. Don't get me wrong, but I Mick Jagger's know. dope. I love oh, yeah. that live performance that he does uh, when he had on like the tight pants with the like red red tight shirt and his he had, uh, he had a uh, the long hair. He was like tripping on some drugs. It looked like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen his video with David Bowie? Me and you watched that. <laughs> I heard some oh, weird. Wild. I've heard some weird things about him and David Bowie used to Dude. hook up. And, okay. Yeah, it, it, the, the things, that, you, the things that you've heard, I know what you've heard. Okay. Yeah. And if you watch the music video to him and David Bowie to Dancing in the Street, that will I think uh, I have. kind of confirm some of those things I that you I heard have. about old David Bowie <laughs> and Mick Jagger. You're just like, ah, eh, them guys are too close. <laughs> like, their faces are way too. close. Close. Yeah. But you know, these yeah, rock stars, whatever. it happens, I guess. Yeah. You get, I'd say they just got bored. Like, you just <laughs> got oh bored God. of supermodels and everything. You and have to be bored at that time. But they have wives, and their wife said that they walked in and seen them in the bed together and it was just like, they both smoking cigarettes like naked. It's like, what's up? Oh. But what even, do you think? That's, like, that's just a uh, given. I, but I'm, even yeah. then, like, yeah. those, those two are so weird that that could just be like a thing that they wanted to do. Who knows? But I do want to say this. 
I know that I told you that before that Hall and Oates is a big inspiration. Mm-hmm. But if I had to name off a bunch of inspirations when it comes to classical, mm-hmm. David Bowie is definitely in mm-hmm. there. Let me tell you why I can confirm that and that I'm not just saying it to be cool is because when I played basketball for Allen Central, my junior year, I played all through high school, but my junior year, you know how that you come out for like um, – like the entrance song the or whatever. Night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not even senior night. It's just like um, introducing the basketball team and the yeah, players. Okay. Everybody I'm gets a song. Yeah. yeah. I came out to Fame by David Bowie. I <laughs> personally picked it. That's, that's cool. Dope. And I danced. I did like a little dun, dun, That's cool. Dun, 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 a team of John dun, dun. Lennon. Most people don't know that. John, John Lennon's on John, that? absolutely what? look it up. John Lennon wrote most of the song, and he's in the background is Fame. Fame. That's John Lennon singing it with really? him. Really? I it never knew that. No way. Wow. Read it. I believe you. I just want to, like, I want to read some of it. Yeah, read it out loud. I love learning read music facts weep. like that, Say, man. Who, who's in the song Fame by David Bowie? Written by Bowie, Carlos, Alomar, and John Lennon. Mm-hmm. Wow. Recorded at Electric Lady Studios, which was uh, Jimi Hendrix's place. Mm-hmm. So that's a cool little fun fact. That's cool. Yeah. And did you Whoa, all, man. Did, did, you did not know that? Bowie mm. wrote Fame no. with former Beatle John Lennon, who also contributes to the backing vocals and also the guitar yes, as well. Yeah. Well, Dope, man. Did not know that. So when that's you listen, a cool that, little fun fact. When you listen know. now, listen to the after, you know, he says Fame, then it's Fame. fame. Yeah. That's David Bowie, obviously. But the real high pitched, clean notes in the back, that's John Lennon. Huh. The whole time. Wow. wow I never would have known that. If it wasn't for you, man. That's yeah. cool. That's dude. Wild, sick. Appreciate that. That's all good. I, I love fame. I'm trying to think of what my favorite David Bowie song is. Oh, mine, mine is probably uh, Ashes to Ashes. That's a good one. Or um, I like Space Oddity. Oh, it's so Space dope, bro. <sighs> or, or Rebel Rebel. Rebel, mm. rebel, dun, 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 dun. yeah. Or ah. um, uh, let me see. Ashes to ashes, fame. Rebel to rebel. I love Ziggy Stardust. Mm-hmm. Too, I was about to say Ziggy Stardust, it. man. Yeah. Hey, the, the guitar under that pressure. Is, is wicked, bro. Under pressure with uh, Queen. Oh yeah, amazing. Yes. It, like whenever you first hear that, everybody's like either under pressure or ass ass baby. Yeah. <laughs> you, you never know which one it's going to yeah. be. Doom 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 da da doom doom. Oh, I know right away which one it is, though. I could tell. You could tell, like, which, like if it starts off, you can tell which one's which. Hmm. But I think uh, Vanilla Ice got sued to death over that oh, song. I'm sure. Dude, yes. Uh, I don't, I think he, I don't know if he, like, made a lot of money off of it, actually. I think that was, like, something that I read oh, about his. I had such a, like, you said as a fun fact, I had such an, another one that I probably thought you didn't know. I lost it. But can you imagine, like, being sued from Queen? And David Bowie, mm. like the two people that I'm you ruined. do not want to get sued yeah. by. I'm absolutely ruined. And yeah. I'm, I'm That's not. like getting sued by the Beatles and the Rolling Stones it's at the like, same you're time. Screwed. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to win that whatsoever. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask you questions. and we're gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask you some questions. This is cool, like bands-wise. Okay. The Eagles or the band? Eagles. I love Eagles. the band, but I mean, Eagles. Okay. Oh, Eagles. Uh, Motley Crue or Guns N' Roses? Motley Crue. Motley Crue. Dude. Hands down. I, Hands down. I, I love Guns N' Roses. I think so too. Really. Yeah. Love Guns N' Roses. Okay, um, I'm just more. I'm just more of a Motley Crue. Fan, I grew up you know? on Motley Crue. My first I'll, CD was Shout the Devil. Yeah, man. Like, oh, that's a good first CD. This years. is a weird one. This old. is such a weird one right here. But I probably already know what y'all gonna answer. I it's bet. so. They're kind of related, not really. Mm-hmm. ACDC or Foo Fighters. Mm. That's actually oh, that's, that's tough. Bro. I love one, Dave Grohl, bro. Oh, he's man. amazing. I love. That. I love. I love ACDC too. But if I had to pick, what are one, we talking about? Like, are we like? Is this like forever? One you have to pick. It's, you, okay, you, this you, game. So like, like, you if can you only pick, listen to forever. The, if uh, the, so, whatever bands I name, whichever yeah. one you pick, the other one is canceled out forever. So I'd have to go Foo Fighters. I'd Me go too. Foo Fighters. ACDC's had their yeah. time to shine. Yeah. Straight up, yeah. I love ACDC, love man, them. but. The Foo Fighters just getting better, you know. They are. They, ACDC's last few albums. It sounds the same as what they used to put up. Well, this might be yeah. a tough one for you. I don't know. Green Day mm. or Blink One Eighty Two. Green Day. Uh, Green Day. Really? Yeah, dude. I, I don't know. Oh, man, God. I've recently got back know, into bro. a Green Day kit. I have to. And, and I have to. like, I, I got uh, one of my uh, good, got their album uh, American Idiot, man. Mm, and oh, I yeah. just like it reminded me just how. Good Green Day was. Yes, one man. of my good friends, my older friend, he's like 40. 
Mm-hmm. Don't matter. I, just, I always mess with him. Kevin Stumbo, his favorite band still right now. He's 40. I think he's 44, 45. His favorite band is Green Day. And me and him play pool all the time at his house, mm-hmm. and he'll bump Green Day, bro, and he'll be like, he loves it. And Heck yeah. He got me back into it. I ain't going to lie. And he loves Blink-182 also. Right. Yeah. But me and him was talking about it, and he's like, <clears throat> he was like, no. But uh, Green Day was before them, which they were. They he were. said, but they was just, they just had, remember at the Woodstock? All oh, that, yeah. Dude, mm-hmm. they, was, they was going crazy during that time. And Green Day's been around since, like, the 80s. Their biggest yeah. song is, yeah. uh, what, Basket Case? It depends who you ask. Maybe. Well, I, I, would say, Bro- I would say more either Holiday or Boulevard, American Bo- Idiot. Boulevard of Broken Dreams is up there. That's the one that yeah. most people know because it went yeah. the most commercial probably, as in, yeah. like, just on everything. But I Basket like Case bomb. is dope. Yeah, and I like that um, the, the one of, that says the name of Jesus in it. Uh, oh, ah, uh, S- uh, suburbia. Jesus, Jesus of suburbia. suburbia. Yeah, bro, yeah. that's yeah. tight. The music yeah. video for that is yeah. that's, wow. That's yeah, super is. tight. Does anybody, yeah. does anybody call you little? Little, little. Like, little. Put the T T L E. And one thing I want to tell everybody is this: when you spell my name, they always put the I in it, but there is no I in it. It's J S S E. People randomly if they message me, which I appreciate, but they'll message me be like with the I in it, and I'm like. But I don't say nothing. <laughs> right. Because yeah. I guess they just type it and just auto corrects it that right. way. We got weird names, man. Like, I get Levi a lot. Yeah. Like, and we just got to yeah. deal with it. You my, know? Dad, my dad is the one that gave me the Jesse name when I was a kid. Hmm. But he's also called me Brett for a long time. <laughs> he's called me Philip. I swear to God. What? Do you have like <laughs> and then Sa- he used to call me. That? He used to call me Salio Panchez. I'm serious. These are all wow. real. Now, ask him. I wish he was here. I, I can see He would that. call me Philip, Brett, Jesse, Little Jesse, Jessica, uh, <laughs> Salad Dressing. <laughs> Sa- <laughs> Sa- <laughs> <laughs> I like how he just like, bro, just like, mama, he says, Salad Dressing. <laughs> I, I promise you, I have why? everything. <laughs> why? Because he's, he, he gets. He's just he, trying to be. He nicknames. He, he's nicknamed my brother E Trade. Mm. Y'all know what E Trade is, bro? Yeah. <laughs> People call my brother E Trade. Um, what else would he call him? I don't even know. He 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 called my brother the most ridiculous stuff, dude. Mm-hmm. But he called me oh just he used to call me ceiling fan. I wish I could call him <laughs> on the phone. He's at work right now and I think Virginia. He used yeah. to call me ceiling fan, bro. Stupid. Oh my god. I swear to you. I, if you ever see him, ask him, say, did you ever call? I your son you. ceiling fan. Tell him about ceiling fan. What's he doing these days? Oh my lord! I love your dad though, man. Oh, he's yeah, such he's a good dude. He's cool. What else did he call me? Um, Speaking about your dad though, let's talk about stuff. this. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, what I brought here. Yes. Yeah. For okay, you explain it to the people out there, and I'll show it to the camera. Okay, it's a old cassette, like how a cassette tape is. It has like a um, like a picture in it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it was my dad's old band. Before you show it, is there a year on it? Does it show a year on it anywhere? I'll keep explaining it before you find it. But anyways, it's a old, like an old cassette tape has the, the picture on the front, and then it folded on to the back, and the cassette went in like this. So it would be like this, picture here, and then fold around picture. Mm-hmm. Okay? Oh, there ain't no... oh, okay, I, can't, I don't know what year, but my dad was like 20s, and it was his old, one of his first... Wallet. The mullet yeah, days. Mullet. It's one of his first mm. bands, and it's called, they was called Magic Cottage. And the cover, before he shows it, the cover was drew by one of their friends or something. But it is, it's so old and vintage, and it's crinkled up. We Go ahead. Dude, that is so tight. And then now, there you go. Flip it around. Look at that. Look at that. That is, that is my dad and uh, three other dudes. Bring me this stuff. Yeah. There we go. But, That's um. Be a lot of editing. <laughs> Dude, nah. that that is vintage, vintage, and I miss don't cassettes. please don't let I me forget too. that. I won, bro. But yeah, definitely leave it right there for right now with the fox. I'll try to remember. I'll see. Glad you said that. You yeah. see, we got the fox holding but, um, you up. <laughs> Magic Cottage, baby. That was my dad's old band, and it's classic. You need to make an album now called Magic Cottage. I should. Shouldn't That's I? not a bad idea. I think everybody nowadays is just very, very sensitive. I think that we're all just we're just. Everybody's overly, overly sensitive. We can't take jokes. Right. Comedy is comedy. That's like what I love what Chris D'Elia says, too, back to him. Like He he says that he's like, um, you know, 
he's like, I'm a comedian. This is what I do. I shouldn't be able to. I sh everybody knows this is what I am. Right. Yeah. So why would y'all try to get mad at me and cancel me when y'all come for this? Exactly. Like, you paid to see this. Why are you yes. complaining about this? You know? The, the yeah, people that get mad about stand-up comedy are the ones that are not going to stand-up comedy shows. Literally. And don't know anything about yeah. it. Yeah. They think they're completely serious. I, uh, I got yeah. on Instagram Live and I got a few people on here. So say oh, you're live there. right now? Yeah, I got, on there, I got on there real quick. <laughs> uh, I didn't know. I, didn't know. I, got, a few, I got a few people commenting right. right now. Oh, it's good. <laughs> people I, just need to stop taking yeah. stand-up so seriously. That's what it is. It's jokes. That's what it always has been. Is it's, all, it's all it needs to be. Jokes. And it just, it's unfortunate, man, because it, it makes people scared to do it nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, especially after seeing what happened to Dave Chappelle. You know, but even then, he's not yeah. canceled. Like, and nah. that's, that's but one does, thing does, he not say the, does he not say the most prolific stuff? <laughs> Yes, yeah, and, and it, ever. It, yeah, but, but the thing, <laughs> the things that people get mad about is these so-called journalists taking one little sentence out of a fifteen-minute-long joke, and that's and they that's say that, that's the point. That's, that's it. That's the point that he's trying to yeah, make. They, no, they if you uh, get down to the last few minutes, he, of he's it, he's it, a perfectionist because. Then I'm glad you brought this up. When I look at him, I dissect it. I'm like, I try to remember everything that he says because I know it's tying into something. Right. His brain is phenomenal. He thinks I don't know what level, he's, how, how he comes up with this stuff, bro. But like for you that you do comedy, you might understand. And I kind of understand because the same thing as music. It's all kind of the same thing. It's just like what is deep. People that really watch stand-up and are fans of it, they get it. Cancel culture isn't a real thing. They try to say that it is, but it's really not. Everybody no. that's been canceled mm -hmm. are still out there They're doing their doing, thing. Yeah. Louis C.K. is about to release a special. Dave Chappelle is on a stadium tour yeah. right now. Who, who else has been but canceled? But Dave Chappelle's supposed uh, to be canceled. Exactly. It's not right. real. The, the, the media wants you to think that it's a real thing when yeah. it's not. No. The, there is a the such a small majority of people that will actually get offended by this. Yeah. But I would say that at least eight out of ten people think that it's hilarious. But that's not what gets clicks. What gets clicks is, oh, Dave Chappelle said this, so people are mad. <laughs> yeah, Nobody horrible. wants yeah. to say that, hey, this joke is hilarious yeah. because they might lose funding or whatever. Or views or attention. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's all about the clicks. And the media wants you to think that this cancel culture exists when in reality it doesn't. Nope. They're trying to it's cancel Travis real. Scott hardcore. So yeah. let's talk about that. Let's talk about that for I, sure. I, know you, and, and, I want to. In a year. He'll yep. release a new album. Everybody's going yeah, to forget about it. Yeah, he's working on it. one called Utopia. Yeah, 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 exactly. He's all, that, that was like he did the Astro World concert stuff. He's done that because he's milking that, bro. Because that's just insane. Yeah, bro. You know, it, it's it's unfortunate what happened. Yeah. It, it really Definitely, is, bro. Rest in peace to <laughs> yeah. the children and stuff. Hopefully, if, people learn though. But if that. it was my opinion, here's my opinion. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody below the age of eighteen should have been at that. I, yes. I completely you know? agree. What was like some nine year old was there? A nine year old, yeah. Have y'all ever What's seen the... the Netflix documentary Look Mom I Can Fly? I want I want it to By him? A... Yes. No. Okay. It's, I've been wanting to it's check amazing. That out. You need to watch I it. I just want to have this. It's amazing you need to watch it. Because maybe this could be in a vlog one day. It's in the year three thousand. In the year this <laughs> posting this in the year. We are in the year three thousand, bro. We're already there. This is year 3000. <laughs> what, what's the thing about the uh, the movie, though? I mean, it talks about, like, how every concert, every Astro World is like that. Yeah. It, on every concert, they expect is everybody to Is that to on rage. Netflix right now? Huh? Is that on Netflix? It should be. I have to watch that, it too. It should be. It's, it's one of the best documentaries on a musician I've ever seen but, in my life. It's beautiful. But, you know, like, hopefully fans learn from that, though. Like, I mm. mean, some of them were just being dumb. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen this one video where a medic was trying to get through on a golf Those cart, and they were the... on the golf cart yep. dancing. Yeah, think what about it. Like, think, the... think about it like this. Look at it this perspective. You've stood in front of a crowd, even if it was just fifty to hundred to two hundred. You've been in front of a crowd. I don't know if you've been with more. If you've been at a thousand, the the, the, the highest is a thousand. Okay, that's awesome. I ain't that's been in front of a thousand. So many. Nerve I couldn't do it. Yeah, I guarantee it. I have <laughs> not. I have not been in front of a thousand yet, but I've been in front of you know two hundred plus. And every time, that to me is like 
awesome mm -hmm. because I'm coming up and stuff, and I'm very thankful for that. But then there's a point where you look, and you can't control every person. No, you can't, bro. No. Especially as the artist. Oh, now, no. if all this, now, think about Travis Scott's eyeballs. He's got two earpieces in, and I've performed. Yep. I know what it's like, but not that big yeah. yet. Yeah, sixty thousand people what, or something like that. What, right? was it sixty thousand? They say yeah. hell fifty thousand, bro. There's a hundred thousand people there. There's no, there's no way. You know how many people bombarded and came through. But that's crazy, bro. I'm gonna try to see how many people were. Think in there. about it like this, though. Imagine even looking at fifty thousand people in front of you. Yeah, that's a lot of faces, mm -hmm. and it's dark. Yep. And I ain't justifying anything. No, I'm just telling y'all facts right now. Right. I can't. Yeah. I, Good. He should pay, he should have some repercussions on this. He should yeah. do something. Right. Absolutely, he's in trouble. So he better make a move. Right. But I, I what I will, what I will say though, like any artist that wants to have a festival like this, <laughs> make sure that you are just prepared. Have no Absolutely, bro. Have no yeah, security. I think that, that was another problem, and I don't know how much control he has over okay, that. Okay, tell you what, if he if he even foresees those right. circumstances, that's probably Let me, his I'm gonna finish yeah. my thought though, so we can understand. Looking at fifty thousand people, like right now, if we're looking at this window, fifty yeah, thousand people. Even yeah, though 50, I know, 000. I know for a fact there was more than that. They had to right, be had to because, dude, it was it was, it was so squished, too. dude. Yeah. It was insane. So, anyways, let's just say fifty to hundred thousand. Then you got earpieces in playing the music. Yep. You got the microphone you got hold on to. Mm -hmm. You're sweating. You got to perform. Probably, he's probably stoned. Yep. Because he smokes, or he's probably drunk. Either one. Okay. He's got the big. You seen the setup of the big mountains and the yeah. big lights oh, and the yeah, fogs it was crazy. and the fire. Yeah. And then he's got a huge stage and just thousands of lights. And he's got a DJ behind him squalling yeah, right behind him the whole time. Yeah, man. And then he's got fifty to hundred thousand people in front of him, just like. Just he ain't raging. gonna see who's on the ground getting stomped on. He ain't gonna see that. All he sees like, is a ocean it, of people. Have you watched the full concert yet? Yeah. I've watched the entire yeah. thing all yeah, the way I through. Did. And when you watch it. He stopped like three times. He and did. said, "Help them up," and he helped a few people up. Yeah. And a medic got this one dude and helped him. But where the people was dying at was a little bit toward. Bro, he didn't see none of that. He can't. There's no from, way he from, could have from seen. From what it. I seen on the show, if he did see it and he didn't do nothing, he is a piece of dirt. Yep. And mm. he needs to never ever do anything ever again. Mm. But, but from, what what I really gathered from, from my it, knowledge, though, he ain't seen none of it. I don't think he did either, man. What, what the stuff that I've read into it, I haven't looked into it that much. Yeah. But. I have seen like they just like it seemed like they weren't prepared. You know, like they, they didn't have not. enough medics, yeah. they didn't have enough security. And that's where I think like people are really finding the fault. Like not in just Travis Scott and like you know, his his opinion or what he could have done or whatever. Yeah. I think that's where they're really finding the fault is just like if you're gonna have a festival that big, be prepared. And right. if you're not then just don't even have it. In Do the you first really house. think, bro? I mean, really, just let's be common sense. Or just use our brains for one second. Do you really think that out of all the shows he's done, in front of that big of a crowd before, mm -hmm. all the things he's did, all the shows he's done, working his butt off to get where he's at, doing what he's got to do, you really think that if he's seeing in the crowd somebody dying, he ain't gonna stop it? Yeah, of right. course he would. Yeah, yeah. I don't he's think, got too much to lose, bro. Right. Yeah, I don't think it's a satanic ritual like no. everybody's talking. No. I thought it at first. That's... I did about two days. I was like, he was wearing the pearl. Did you know he was wearing the, in that escape plan video? The, the pearl he's wearing jam. the pearl jam shirt when eight people died at the concert. He's yep. wearing it in in, in his new people, people reach, dude. dude yeah, reach, bro. People reach. I reached that, for, I reached you, for you about can find two a days. Conspiracy right. theory in anything if mm -hmm. you look hard enough. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to this astral world, like what I will say is if be prepared. And if you're not prepared, then just don't even do it in the yep, first place. Right. And I don't know how much he even knew about the situation, about how to prepared be they you, were. And if probably and if, and if he, not a lot. If, if he did know, then yes, that is a problem. They had confirmed seven hundred and fifty police officers over there. That's not enough. No, it's not. No. Two thousand will probably be enough. Yeah. Even then, I mean, like, because you're talking, that's two police officers for every 25,000 people. Like, wait, 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 wait. No, it's wait, like, I, I, no I'm not no. good at math. No, that you, was you, way all, you <laughs> said it. I think it's like one police officer for every 500 people. It's something like that. That sounds about right. That sounds good. We'll go with that. Yeah, but, but, but even then, I mean, like, have thousands of police officers, thousands of paramedics, thousands of everything. If you have 50,000 people, then have. 
a hundred thousand police officers. Have so stronger have, barricades, not just metal ones like you move. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? But I do think that like a lot of uh, people are actually having trouble just finding people to work these events oh, because yeah. it seems like. I know uh, Floyd Fest in Virginia had a sim- similar problem to this. It's a great music festival. Well, I mean, it, can like, it, could I perform there? Maybe. What man. is it? Is it all I, country? No, it's a little mixture of everything. It leans more towards the rock and countryside. But with what you're doing, you never. How know. could I you get could a? How there. you take? But, a, get a I'm, I need to hit up somebody and try to slide well, in. I'll, I'll talk to you about. I can bring a few but, artists. But even then, I know that Floyd Fest had had a similar problem to that. Of yeah. course, Astro World, and there was another music festival that I can't remember, but they had a problem with you know just not being very prepared. Right. By the way, let's let's say this: Travis Scott had the first person people to die at the show. No. The Who had the people Who. stamped on. The Who had eleven. Yep. Yeah. Pearl Jam had eight. Uh, you can look it up. There's an old techno uh, band, techno artist, whatever it is, techno music that Daft had Punk. several people hurt and I think a couple killed. And then there was one, a hundred some people caught on fire and died trying to escape the uh, the all go out at once. I can't. I think it was in Rhode Island. I know uh, what you're talking about. I don't yeah, know who it that is. That happened. Though. Look that up. I know what you're talking about, though. I'm just going to look up biggest death toll at a concert ever. Okay, there was one in Rhode Island, though, that I know for sure years ago that a um, bunch of people burnt to death, I'm pretty sure. That's crazy. I haven't yeah, heard about right. that. If it ain't Rhode Island, I'm, no, there's, yeah, I'm guaranteed it's Rhode Island. Right. Look them up. Let's read them do, do, off. Do, 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 do. That's something but, interesting. But people need to realize that, like, listen, if you go to, I'm not, I don't want to say the rat concert, but if you go to a concert like Travis Scott or, you know, Metallica, be like, ready. Like, any, yeah, any I mean, crazy thing like that, yeah. like, yeah, be ready because yeah. you never know. My buddy just went to Suicide Boys. Really? Uh, Frank Hunter, Logan Burke. He yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. He just went to Suicide. Oh, yeah, this, oh dope, that's the bro. one that you're talking about. He thought talk- it was dope. I think that's the one you're talking about. It wasn't in Rhode Island, though. This is in Argentina. There the, is uh, one in Rhode Island, though. Pro Manon Fire? Whatever that was. Cro Manon Fire? I'm not pronouncing that right. Whatever. How are you pronounce it? I, I don't want to offend this. anybody. But, anyways, this was Go December ahead. 30th, 2004. 194 people died. Jesus. So that's way worse. No, we're not. I mean, anybody's life again. Anybody's life being took away is awful. Children, everything, bro. That's sad. That's awful. Absolutely. There is no buts. I ain't even gonna say but. It's all awful. Okay, so apparently it was. Apparently it was a fire. So that's what happened there. Hmm. And and a club. The club club? had several doors that were permanently locked shut, and emergency exits were fenced off to prevent people from sneaking in and avoiding a cover charge. Oh my god! What a stupid idea. There it is. Republica Cremonon was about a month overdue for a fire inspection at the time of the incident and had no sprinkler system. A fire what? enveloped netting near the ceiling and quickly spread. At most of the nearly 200 casualties were the result of inhaling smoke and toxic fumes rather than being crushed or burned. Dang. God. That's horrible. Now look at this. I it's just found terrible. it. Look. The station nightclub fire. It's uh, In 2003, 100 people died and over 200 were injured at a rock concert in West Warwick, Rhode Island, which I've visited several times. Mm -hmm. It said, we went out on a Thursday night to listen to music, drink some beers, and have a good time, and a quarter of those people didn't get to go home, ever, says survivor Linda Saren. The blaze began with a band, Jack Russell's Great White, which that was the band Great White. Right. Oh, I remember this now. I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. And it says... um, Took the stage, and their tour manager set off four large fireworks. Flames soon appeared on the walls on either side of the stage and spread quickly along the foam that lined the walls and ceiling intended to dampen sound. Which shouldn't have been there. Shouldn't have had any type of foam on concrete walls. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, sometimes that helps with sound, but if you're going, you'd be using pyrotechnics. Yeah. 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 Place right. them yeah, accordingly. Right. Yeah. 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 That's And th- wait, this one right here blows my mind. Number two... Is in Kentucky. Oh my God! Where? Southgate, Kentucky. The Beverly Hills Super Club Fire. This was May twenty eighth, nineteen seventy seven. A hundred and sixty five people died. Jesus. Uh, Whoa! I've never heard of this. I haven't either. The Beverly Hills Super Club was a sprawling maze of a club in Kentucky, located just across the bridge from Cincinnati, Ohio. Several events were going on at the same time of the night of the fire, including banquets, receptions, and a John Davidson concert. 
I don't know who that is. I don't know either. But apparently that was a fire as well. It's there. I don't want to read into all that. But you know, that's crazy. I don't. I don't know. I haven't. I, n- no, I never did. Either. I never knew what that. What year was that? Seventy seven. You said. Yeah. But you know, when it comes to Travis Scott, like whoever was in charge of the festival, overseeing all the safety protocols, the EMTs, the security, all, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. That's the person they really need to focus on. Yeah, it ain't just all about Travis. Whenever no, it comes true. to organizing, it a ain't festival, though. But they're they're, they're like it's him. It's well, him. Of, of he's course, there to of perform. Course. That's a, well, that's why yeah. Jeffrey Epstein's getting all the rap instead of people like Prince Andrew and Bill Clinton and everybody else that flew on that private jet of his. Yep. They, they 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 just they always want a face. <laughs> that's the reason that we have a president. So people don't blame the CIA and yep. you know everybody else under that umbrella. They can just blame the president. This is someone to point a finger at. Exactly. You have to have That's somebody to take the down. Somebody has to. Yeah. Well, 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 Pearl well, Jam didn't get canceled. The Who didn't get canceled so right. fast. These people didn't get canceled. By the way, did you see that girl pee on that dude the other day? Dude. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck was up with that? Well, I'm, I'm glad you seen that. I am going, <laughs> I'm going to the wrong Straight concerts. left field, but... I yeah, told my wife, I'm like, I would have loved to have been there. I would have been <laughs> like this. Yeah! That's the going on. thing I've ever heard. What is going on? I ain't peeing on no. I ain't R. Kelly. That is metal that's right some, there. That's some R. Did Kelly right there. Did you see the right dude spit there. it out? No. Nope. That's insane. Yeah. If you watch it, you can see him open his mouth, and he spits it up. Oh, my God. You know, kinda, what, you know what else he did? You know what else he did? He was flinging it off the stage on people. Yes. Dude. That's the most pun you thing I've ever such heard. Ar- she apologized uh, for that, man. I, I keep Why? saying that it. That broke my heart. I, I keep apologize. saying it, though, but that's such R. Kelly. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? But, but, uh, well, remember, well, Dave well. Chappelle, remember Dave Chappelle? Piss on you. <laughs> <laughs> Your body. Your body. Your body. Your body. I want to piss on you. Remember he was holding jokes of his <laughs> And you'll never feel quite the same oh, when Lord. you get a whiff oh, God, I'm of dead, my Hershey's stain. <laughs> I want to poop on you, too. Yeah, poop on you. I pee dead. in your food. <laughs> but when it, dude, that Clay chick. Clay Bigsby. Real talk. You know Clay that, Bigsby? That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can't talk about that. That, that, that <laughs> chick should have never that, apologized, though. If you're no. going to, I, th- I think they're a metal group from what I've yeah. uh, collected of it. Either metal or punk, one or two. If you're, uh, either one. If you're going to a metal or a punk show. It was show, consensual, though. Guy, that guy was straight. Yes. That, that was yes. planned, bro. The dude spit it out. Okay, He planned. opened up his mouth and spit it out. I don't know if it was planned, dude. but the, the dude was obviously you know why into I think, it. You know why I think it was planned? They said all the, here's why I think it's planned. Hear me out. The guy playing the trumpet or whatever he was playing, mm-hmm. When he seen a guy come up on stage, he backed up like he knew what was going to happen. He right. backed up, moved out the way, and the guitar player was like, oh, it's time. Uh. They both moved out the way, and it was like she choreographed it so perfect. She straight did that boom, then let him do his thing for a second, and she made him get off stage, and then they continued back on. Yep. She was peeing on his face while still singing. Yeah, that's dude, pretty scary. Is that punk though. rock? That's punk yes. rock. That's about it as is. punk or as metal, whatever you want to call it. That's about as punk it is. or as yeah. metal but as you can rose. possibly yeah. get. Reverse the rose for a second, though. Sorry to the. I don't want nobody to think I'm whatever. I'm a <laughs> feminist because I am. Reverse the rose. That's a girl in there and a dude's peeing on her. He's getting straight oh, yeah. shot that night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yeah. see what I mean? Yeah. So, how is that fair? It ain't. It's not. Not at all. People that watch this are going to think that I didn't know nothing. They're going to be like, how do you know these things? <laughs> I'll just be hearing people. You know, let me tell you a good skill everybody needs to develop, even me sometimes, but I've developed it recently, is to just sit and listen. Not even listen, hear what somebody hmm. says. There's a difference between listening and hearing. I think there is. Listening implies that you're there, but you're mm-hmm. not really there. Right. Like you're, you're in your mind. You're mind. thinking about this and that. But when you hear somebody like, oh, I heard you. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, I so that, when you bro. really hear a person say something and then it hits you here mm-hmm. or you take in that knowledge, yeah. there's such a difference. I think mm-hmm. that. So I am I really be hearing people. Like, I really be hearing what you say sometimes on interviews. And I want, in my music, and we ain't talked about the new album I'm working on, but basically for this new album, I want people to not just listen to it or vibe to it. I want them to hear me. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Yeah. What'd you, and I want you to, to express what you felt about the two songs that I played you before this interview started. Very sad. Truthfully, I want you to hear They're hits. They're the, hits. Yeah, the, I don't care. They're hits. The one is really going to be a hit. You, which but one? I, the, first, one. The, the, first one. Oh, Never Leaving You? Yes. Yeah, yeah and then I, I like, played I'm you, I played the, you the song, uh, Hold Me Like There's No Tomorrow. Yes, I love that. Strictly, just straight guitar. Super, super sad. 
It, well, Never leaving you is a hit, though. though. I cannot wait to go shoot the video with Devin, either January or February. It's going to be so good. What I like about your style, man, is it stays similar, similar, but but <laughs> but never the same. It's true. Right. Yeah. I can't, be, sta- I can't be stagnant, bro. Because like, like those two songs that, like bro. sounded I really like you, I can't, I can't, but they I were can't, different. Yes, dude. I yeah. can't say I can't stay stagnant. You know what that means? Like I, staying in one place, like, doing the same thing. Basically, same and stagnant thing. can also imply that you're just stuck in the same mindset. Absolutely. You're just like, oh, it's going to work this way. But then it's like you keep doing it, doing it for 25 years, and nothing ever changes. Yep. I think that's what uh, called being insane is, is doing the same, same thing, thing over and over, and expecting a different results. results. Yeah. Absolutely. That's yep. such a true statement, you know? Albert Einstein, and, by God. Yep. Yep. But, what, but I want you, I, I just honestly, like, I would appreciate, like, a real opinion of what you think about both songs, like a full explanation. The first, if you could. <laughs> the first song is a hit. And... It's, you kind of got like a hey yeah vibe to it. The the lyrics are really sad, no but, way. but 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 the really the, the beat the, but the beat is but the beat is got, very up. No, no, the reason not, not the sound of it, but like no, like the lyrics are sad, but the beat is very upbeat. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and, I, and I think it's hilarious when artists do that because yeah. like it, you'll just see some people like what was that pumped up kicks? Yeah, yeah. that that's oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, if, if you run. listen if you listen to the words, you're like oh my, my god, <laughs> oh, that's tough. But yeah, but, but people is. are just like. Yep. And I just find that absolutely hilarious when an artist does something like that. And oftentimes it creates hits. And I think that that song is going to be a hit. It's just like, it's, it's, That's I, why I, I ain't like dropped it, it. I've had it. I, I, I made it while I made Barbara Hart, believe it or not. Ain't that weird? I was working on that Punk EP, you know, the Drunk on a Monday song and Upbeat, like da 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 And I made those two very sentimental, sad songs to, to help me start this album. Because right. I had the idea for it, and mm-hmm. the name of the album is called Everybody Has That Somebody. And I'll explain what that means for me. That means that it don't even just have to be a girlfriend or anything. It could be your grandma, your brother, your cousin, mm-hmm. friend, niece, nephew, your dog, right. your fish. Yeah. Whatever it is, everybody has that somebody in this mm-hmm. life that they can fully look at and just trust and fully look at and really just love unconditionally and expect nothing. And I have that. It's just, you know, I have that with someone. And and I also have that with music because I know music will never turn its back on me because mm-hmm. I can just come up with things and do things and it just happens. So everybody has that somebody will be my magnum opus. It will be my... Look What's it up. magnum opus? You don't know what that is? No. That's a Google great it. word. Google it. Google it and read but, it out loud. Google. I was going to tell them to Google it. But, but but the uh, before you read, I gotta say this though. Hold on. <laughs> Since he's going to Google it, which I think is cool, when he reads it fully, understand it that this album I'm saying it here now will be my magnum opus, and it will fully develop me into even more. Let's let's end it with that because we have to wrap this up soon. But I want to talk okay. about the second song okay. first. The the second song, it's it's great that you are being real. There are so many artists that want to make the hits, and there's nothing wrong with that. Make your money, make your hits. That's what gets you popular. That's what gets you seen. That's what builds a fan base. Mm-hmm. Make the hits, but also keep it real for those folks too, because you know, like Absolutely. Kid mm-hmm. Cudi, for example. I love Pursuit of Happiness, but that's not why I love Kid Cudi. He made some of the realest music that. You know, I, I never thought that I would be able to relate to somebody. The Man on, I, the, I, the, Man I, on the Moon trilogies are amazing. Oh, I, Lord, But yeah. I, I've just yeah. went through some things Absolutely. in my life that, like, I thought was only happening to me. I had a mindset that I thought only I had. And to see somebody who people look at as, oh, this is Lil Jesse. Yeah. He's, he's got it all. You right, know, yeah. he's Lil Jesse. To hear that you still struggle with problems. You still have parts of your life that may get you sad or whatever. It it shows people that, you know, no matter what, yeah. you still, life is always going to be a struggle. And when somebody seems like they have it all, that's not always the case. And whenever somebody is feeling sad, you know, they can put on one of those songs and have somebody to relate to. Because yes. there's some people out there that don't have anybody, that may have a, a few so-called friends mm-hmm. or, or they just may be alone and they feel like they have nobody but this gives them an outlet yeah and but, but also gives them somebody to relate to and it makes them feel not alone and that's why i fell in especially, love with kid cuddy's music this area 
like where I'm from right now, where we're all from. Yeah. You know, it's just full of ignorance. And I've been there mm-hmm. doing it, and I still do it sometimes from time to time. I still act a fool. And yeah, I'm yeah. trying my best mm-hmm. to not do that because I'm realizing that, you know, the only way that I'm going to get where I want to go is if I make sacrifices. Right. As in stop going out. Just yeah, lock next. in. Lock, lock in, bro. And Treat your hobby like a job. This is still Absolutely. a job, man. Yeah. And a lot of ours don't get that. Yeah, it's fun. No, I know it is. And yeah. I, that's why I don't be releasing yeah. dumb stuff and right. just mm-hmm. dropping stupid songs. Yeah, and, here, and, there, and, and, here, and, I, and I used to delete my... It's just something big that I used to do. I used to delete my like pictures off Instagram and try to be like, I'm going to redo stuff. No, yeah. bro, I'm being real and I'm just going to let it roll. And yeah. they see what they see. And, yeah, bro. And, you know, keep it clean. But it it, go, it goes to show, yeah. like, so many people want to do what everybody else is doing, act gangster, gangster or make this party yeah. music yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. That's only going to get you so far. Right. Yeah. But, when you know, you mean to tell you the realest thing ever is when when you ain't being yourself, you're being everyone else. Absolutely. And that's just what I think all the yeah. time. You know, and, you know, since you say we got to wrap this up, I'm going to say this to end it like this because I might use this for a clip of my YouTube to okay. promote my album. Right. So, okay. bet, bet. Read what Magnum Opus means. Google it and read it. And, and the name of the album, tell people what it's going to be. No, I, I, I'm going to do it like this okay. for the clip. So I'm going to say this. Google what Magnum Opus means and read it out loud, please. Okay. Magnum Opus. Is that Opus? Yeah, Opus. O- opus. 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 Yeah. I, Magnum, I, opus. Magnum, yeah. Magnum Opus. Magnum Opus. Yep. Such a great name. That needs to be the name of the album right Read there. That out loud, Anyways, please. Magnum Opus, the definition is a large and important work of art, music, or literature, especially one regarded as the most important work of an artist or writer. Ooh. Yep. Absolutely. And That's good. this third album that I'm working on was That's Latin. I, yeah. This third this third album that I'm working on called Everybody Has That Somebody. Which take it how you hear it mm-hmm. will be my magnum opus. Will be my best work because since I did these other two albums, I have finally developed something that I want to do even more, and it's more personal. And it's going to be super raw, mainly acoustic guitar with just me, and it's going to be super raw. And I'm excited to give it to everybody. And and I, don't listen to it. Don't just listen to this album. Hear the album. Hear what I'm saying because everything I'm going to say in it is going to be the truth. Details that I never thought I would talk about and songs that I've wrote that I never thought I would are mm-hmm. going to be in this. And y'all heard those two songs. Yeah. It's personal, but then again, it's relatable. Exactly. So, Absolutely. Yeah, that's what I'm, we're saying. I'm excited. Yeah. It'll be. It'll probably come out sometime 2022, but going to shoot videos, going to have a big work of art with it. And it's probably going I'm shooting for 12, 12 songs. Like my a full every, album, full yeah. album, twelve songs, and every song on it is going to be comparable to the best song on it. If that makes sense, they're going to be mm-hmm. number ones, number ones, number ones, number mm-hmm. ones. So I'm I'm ready to give it to everybody, definitely. Compared comparing, you know, the first time that we done a podcast to today's, yeah, you. <sighs> You've like yeah. evolved, man. The, yeah, the, the evolution really. of you, not not just of your music and your career, but you as a person, yeah, has been a beautiful thing. You've become such a better person, and I can just tell that you know, it, despite all the struggles, mm-hmm. you're happy. Yeah, yeah and man. that's a great thing to see, man. I, I'm it, happy. It, it really I'm happy. Is. I'm happy when I'm in into music. You know. Mm-hmm. That's when I'm happy, but so, no, I'm not always happy. I'll be real with everybody that'll ever watch me or talk to me. I ain't always happy, but when I do feel happy, oh, I soak it in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll hug it, but, bro, and I'm just like, yeah, don't bro. you leave for a minute. But I have my flaws and sins, and I have problems and issues, just like everybody else, and I'm but, and I'm forever will be just like anybody else. You, you, I, I know, I, but I know, okay. a lot, I know a lot of the stuff that you've went through, man. Yeah, yeah. And and, and to see you in the studio today with. You know, the look that you have on your face yeah. and yeah, to see bro. where you are, man. It's just an amazing thing to see. Yeah, and, dude, I, I'm happy that you're still here. I'm happy yeah. that you're still doing your thing. And to anybody out there, you know, like, going through it, like, you can be a great example to those mm-hmm. that no matter what, don't give up because after the rain, there's always a rainbow. Better Absolutely. that is our and, and 
Thank you for that. That's so awesome. And I also want to say this to anybody that I've ever hurt in this life and ever did anything wrong to, that ain't who I am. Like, I, I've i been immature. We've all been immature. And I'm just now, my brain is just now developing that all I want is love, not malice. Like, I want love. I don't want malice. I don't want, I have no bad intentions on no human being ever again. Unless have you been reading you a dictionary? Uh-uh. Where are you coming out with all these words? Malice. Magnum opus. I have I, I have no intentions on anyone. I want I do not want malice. I want love, and I'm not in fear of anything besides me failing myself. Right. I ain't here to prove nobody nothing. I'm proving me something. I'm proving my soul is proving my physical body that I'm capable of achieving what has been brought into my mind. So that's all I'm doing. Everybody has that somebody will be my magnum opus. I want love, not malice, and that's it. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, Slicky and Lil Jesse. Love you guys. Love you, bro. Love you, bro. See you next week, folks. Woo! Bam, bam. Let's go. That was a good one.